Hey everyone, let's dive into the topic of value at risk or VAR, which may seem complicated on the surface, but it's actually really easy. So let's just start off with the definition. Value at risk is the potential loss in value of a risky portfolio or asset given these two inputs. Now, one would be a specified time period by which we want to measure this value at risk. It could be one day, one week, one year, etc., and a confidence level or confidence interval. Now, let's go through the three main methods to calculate value at risk, starting with the parametric method. The parametric method calculates VAR by assuming that the returns follow a specific probability distribution, typically normal, or we could take into account skewness and kurtosis, but that's beyond the scope of this video. And using the mean and standard deviation of historical returns to estimate potential losses at a given confidence level. So let's just jump through an example where we calculate VAR with the parametric method. Remember that when calculating VAR, we need to specify one, a time period, and two, a confidence level. So in this example, let's use a time period of just one year and a confidence level of 95%. Now, if we use a one-tailed test, a confidence level of 95% will give us a Z-score of 1.65. VAR is always going to be a one-tailed test because we only are interested in the losses, not the gains. So let's assume that we're looking at a stock with these characteristics. This stock has a mean expected return of 10%. So if we go over to our bell curve distribution over here, our mean of which we expect this stock to perform is a 10% return for one year. As for standard deviation, for the sake of this example, we'll assume that the standard deviation is also 10%. Now, we can calculate the value at risk using this formula. So the value at risk will tell us our mean expected return of 10% minus the standard deviation of 10% multiplied by the z-score of 1.65 so if we solve for this, we'll find that our VAR is 10% minus 16.5%, which gives us a value of negative 6.5%. So let's think about for a second what that means. We expect a return, right, of 10% right here. But we're looking at our fifth percentile worst outcome, which would actually end up somewhere over here, which ends up giving us a return of negative 6.5%. So this is our value at risk at this 95% confidence level. So that means that in this part of the tail, this basically represents 5% of the worst possible returns. Now, if we go on this, the right side of that barrier here, this would be the 95 percentile better outcomes. Now, what would happen if we increased our confidence level, meaning we moved further out into the tail? Well, let's say instead of doing a 95% confidence level, we did a 99% confidence level. That would increase our Z-score from 1.65 up to 2.33. You can check any standard one-tailed Z-score table for that number. Now we go down into our bar. The mean and the standard deviation still remain the same, both are 10%, but now our Z-score is 2.33. So here it's 10%, which are, is our mean expected return, minus 23.3%, which is our loss beyond that return, which ends up giving us a value of negative 13.3%. So now where would that plot on our bell curve? Well, we're moving now further out into the tail, and this might be our 13.3%, which is our VAR at the 99% level, and so now, Everything to the left of this would be just 1% of the returns, and then everything to the right of it would be 99% of the returns. Now let's dive into what I believe is the most straightforward method for calculating VAR. The historical method calculates VAR by using actual historical returns of an asset or portfolio, ranking these returns from worst to best, and selecting the loss at the desired percentile as the VAR estimate. So let's walk through an example 
Now we have these inputs. Now let's assume for the time period that instead of one year, we're actually looking for our one day var. And now for our confidence level, let's say we're looking for a 99 percentile confidence level. And then we gathered actual historical returns from the last 500 trading days and we sorted them all and we ended up with this order. Now the best one was 4.7%, the worst one was negative 3.96% and we have hundreds in between these two. Now how would we calculate our VAR? Well, we're looking for the 99th percentile confidence interval, right? So we can take 100% minus 99%, which will give us 1%. So we're really looking for the one percentile outcome. If we have 500 observations and we're looking for the one percentile outcome, that would really be the fifth worst observation. So we can start down here, one, two, three, four, and five. And there we find that basically on any given day, our 99th percentile worst outcome would ex be expected to be negative 3.73%, which is our VAR estimate. Now let's dive into what's probably the most difficult method of VAR to calculate, the Monte Carlo method. Basically, we're gonna simulate numerous potential future price paths. These paths are gonna be based on the mean and the standard deviation that we talked about on the parametric method part of this video. And then we might run thousands of different simulations and calculate potential gains or losses for each of the simulations. And then we're going to look at all of those values and find the VAR at the percentile that we're interested in. It'll look something like this. In order to calculate the VAR, let's assume that our starting portfolio value is $1,000 and our expected return for one single year is 10% and we have a 20% standard deviation. Now, let's assume that we're going to try to calculate this VAR for a 95% confidence level and a one year time period. So, we will just run thousands of different simulations based on these metrics to see what is our VAR going to be at this confidence level. So every single time our simulation is going to start at 1000. Now our mean expectation is that we would end at one year in the future, we would basically have like $1,100. So if we do thousands of simulations, we're gonna have so many results that go so many different ways. Every single simulation starts out at $1,000 and then it progresses over time. And let's say we did this thousands and thousands of times, then we take all the results and we take the basically the fifth percentile worst outcome of all the results. And that ends up being, let's say, that we end up with about $600 in that fifth percentile worst outcome. Why is it fifth percentile? Because it's the confidence level minus one, which would give us that fifth percentile worst outcome. Now, we have this $600 at the end, so what would our VAR be? Well, we actually lost, if we ended up with 600 and we started with 1,000, we actually lost a total of $400. And so if we lost $400 out of our original $1,000, then we ended up with a 40% loss at that 95th percentile worst outcome, which means that our VAR in this case would be a negative 40%. If you'd like to learn how to calculate the value at risk using the Monte Carlo method in Excel or Python, click here or here.